Praise the Lord. Are you guys, do you want me to pull out my horn? <laughs> Wake you guys up? <laughs> hey man, Marcos, can you please move this over there? Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Hey man. But I, I'd like to welcome all of you to Truth and Love Family Ministries. By now you should know what my name is. Do you know me by name? Hey Amen. But praise God, we'd like to welcome all the first-time visitors. Is this your first time here? Please raise your hand. Don't be ashamed. Maria Elena, raise your hand. This is Brother Frank's mom. Amen. And Brother Frank, I think he's going to be bringing all of Ontario into the house. Amen. We need everybody in Ontario to come into this house. Amen. But I do want to continue with a word that I've been on for a couple of weeks now. And every time that I go back to, to open up this book, God just gives me more and more that's related to this message, people. Amen. How many people believe in the Word of God? Amen. Come on. Don't be ashamed to raise your hand. You're in the house of God Amen. this morning. Amen. And I just want to thank the Lord for allowing me and the privilege and the liberty and the freedom to open up this book and bring forth this Word. You know, I'm so accountable that every time that I open up this book, that God begins to speak to me first, that I can speak into your lives. In order for you to be edified, encouraged, and built up. Amen? Amen? Because that's what my job is, is to preach the word in season and out of season. Amen? To rebuke and exhort. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to be exhorted. But when the rebukes come in, they don't want to be rebuked. Amen? But there has to be order in the church. Just like there's order in your home, there has to be order in the church too, people. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? But this morning, I'd like for all of you to turn over to the book of Exodus. I'm going to open up with this foundational scripture, these verses that God has given me. Exodus chapter 33. Amen. How many people? Okay, I'm going to give you time to open up to the book. It's in the back, in the beginning, next to Genesis. Amen. Exodus 33. Thank you, Father. But this morning, I tell you what, the Lord has been really speaking to me all week concerning this message and how many people walk, want to walk in the favor of God. Amen. Look, I don't want, the mercies of God are great, people. The mercies of God are great. But when you start walking in the favor of God and His grace, there is nothing greater. The Word of God says that there is great grace. And it tags along and it runs parallel with favor, people. How many people have ever been favored by man? Huh? How many people have ever been favored by man? Come on, nobody's ever been blessed by somebody else besides God. You know that God uses people? And I can show you through His Word how God can use people to bring favor and grace upon your lives. Amen? But this morning, I do want to continue with this. Because it's so important from time to time, like Brother Bob said, you know, a lot of people say that you don't have to repent every day, but we do have to repent daily. Amen? Because you know why? I'm going to tell you why. Because sometimes all of us who are in here, all of us, there's no exceptions, people, okay? Nobody in this place is exempt. Sometimes we sin through our own eyes. Sometimes we sin through our thoughts. And sometimes we sin through the things that we're hearing, and it's worse when we sin when we speak. That's why it's so important at the end of the day when you're laying your head on that pillow, and you think about everything that you've been through that day, that you can lay there and ask God to forgive us again for another day. Forgive us from our heart, forgive us for our mind, forgive us for everything that we have seen, heard, and even spoken. Amen? Yes, because nobody's perfect. That's right. We still live in this carnal flesh, people. That's right. And we are going to think with our carnal mind. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? Am I speaking truth here this Amen. morning? Amen. Amen? So I don't want to hide behind the bush. I don't want to hide things behind closed doors. I don't want to sweep things under the carpet. Amen? 
we got to be transparent with ourselves. Because God sees and hears everything that we do anyway. So what are you trying to hide? Amen? Amen. So we can be hiding from God because God already knows, people. Look, it's so easy to come in here and say, Oh, I'm so favored from God. I'm so highly blessed and this, this, and that. And all this time you've been doing things behind closed doors. <laughs> Doesn't work that way, people. Because we're all to blame. Am I right or wrong? Right. I know that I'm right. Amen. Because God is right. Amen. 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 Exodus. So the title of the message is the favor of God. Amen. So I'll ask you one more time. How many people want to walk in the favor of God? Raise your hands, people. You're making confession this morning. You don't have to say the sinner's prayer. You're making confession that you want the favor of God in your life. Amen. Amen. I know that I do. I don't, I don't, I don't want to lack. Listen to me, you guys. I don't want to lack in anything in life. I don't want to lack in my spiritual walk, especially my walk with God. Amen. My commitment to God, my obedience to God. Amen. I don't want to lack financially. I don't want to lack in my health. I don't want to lack in anything. Because the Lord says, I came to give you life and to give it to you what? Okay, now you know the scriptures. He wants to give you more than what you can handle. Amen. But you're not going to receive those kind of blessings, people, till you get in line with God. And I want to prove this to you, people. Amen. I don't have to prove it to you. You guys read the Bible. You guys, are you guys reading your word? No, well, I'm asking you as your pastor. Are you guys reading your word? How many people eat every day? How many times do you eat? Two, three times a do you get a little snack at the end? Do you save room for dessert? Huh? Okay, just like you eat and just like you enjoy in life. Okay, we need to open up this book and let this feed you. Amen. 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 Exodus chapter 33, starting in verse 1. I have to go back to this so I can continue with the message here, people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Depart and go from here, you and the people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying to your descendants, I will give it. And God fulfilled his promise, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Amen. And I will send my angel before you. Don't you love that, people, when you read verses like that, knowing that God is taking care of you? Huh? Lord. That he will always send an angel before you? Amen. Huh? To prepare people's hearts, souls, and minds what Amen. in your behalf because God has found favor in you. Amen. 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 It says, and I will send my angel before you and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Hittites, and all the Jezebites. Amen. And that, in other words, people, he's going to move away everything that is trying to block you from receiving the blessings of God. Don't you know that the enemy would always like to set up an ambush like my wife is always saying? And you have no clue. You know what an ambush is? You guys know what an ambush is? Yeah. Huh? Okay, I don't need to explain it to you. Because that's the way the devil works. And the devil comes in many ways, people. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Father. He says, now go up. Now this is a commandment from, Mo from God to Moses. He says, go up to a land flowing with milk and honey. And I will not go up in your midst, lest I consume you on the way. For you are what? For you are stiff naked people. Amen. These people were so rebellious. These people were so hard hardened. Amen. They weren't willing to listen to the man of God. Think about everything that they witnessed when they were in Egypt. Think about all the plagues that they witnessed, huh? Everything that came down from heaven, every curse and every commandment that God gave came against what? The Egyptians, amen? But he protected his people. I hope you guys are picking up on yeah, this people amen. already. You guys should be awake to this by now. Amen. Amen. He was protecting his people when the plagues were coming down. Don't you think that God can protect you from all these things now Amen. in these days? Amen. Amen. Can you imagine if God was to work the way he did back then? Huh? 
that he could consume us in one moment of a time. He could take everything that we have. Think about everything that you have right now. Think about everything that you've been trying to build up for yourselves. Amen? Your home, your household, whether you have a business, whatever you're doing in life. Can you imagine taking all that away? You've been working all these years for it. And all of a sudden, here comes God because he sees your ways. Huh? Look, I want the favor of God on me till the day that I die. Amen. 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 Don't you guys want the favor of God? Yes. Amen. And it doesn't matter how young or how old. It doesn't matter if you're married or single. It doesn't matter what kind of nationality, nationality it is, people. You know that God is not a partial God? Amen. That he's not partial to no one. Amen. He doesn't care whether you're rich or poor. He doesn't care whether you live up on San Antonio Heights or down here in the barrio. I love the barrio. Man, you meet some good people in the barrio. Homegrown people, man. People that are willing to say, Pásale. Don't you love that? When somebody says and they welcome you and you sit down, would you like something to drink? Would you like, are you hungry? Man, you could smell a chili con carne that's on the stove. And, and you are hungry, but you're too prideful to say que tienes hambre. And they want to prepare a chili con carne burrito for you and you don't want it? Está loco. The next time somebody makes it, please call me. I'll be there. Just leave the door open. I'm walking right in. Amen. We shouldn't be waiting for an invitation. You know, this is what I hate, people. Okay? Because God hates seven things in the Bible. And I'm not going there with that teaching. But this is what I hate. Why do you have to call your family to come over? Yeah. Why? Well, 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 well is a deep subject, people. Why do you have to call your family? Why do you have to call your mom and dad? Or your brother, your sister, you put your suegra. Man, you know what? I got a good suegra. I really do. She didn't like me at the beginning. She hated me. Or my suegro, he wanted to kill me. You better marry my daughter or I'm going to kill you. Amen. But I tell you what, man. You know what the, evil, what the enemy meant for evil? God turned it around for good. Amen. You know how good my suegra is, huh? You want me to tell you how good my suegra is to me and my wife? That when we go over and we stay in her house, you know what she does? She gets out of her bedroom and oh. gives us her bed. Now you tell me what suegra does that. I don't see any hands going up. <laughs> that means that you don't have a true relation with somebody. <laughs> I'm telling you people. But see, there's too many people that are walking around with a stiff neck. You can't tell me when and where and what, Pastor Bob. And you know what? You guys do whatever you want. I mean, no me importa. Huh? All I can do is pray for you. All I can do is stand in the gap for you. All we can do is intercede for you guys. That's all we can do. Amen? You know that the rest is up to you guys? Huh? You're the ones that are going to have to walk in his ways. Don't walk my way. Amen? Don't walk in my ways. Amen? Take up your own cross, people. Amen? Amen? He says, now go up to a land flowing with milk and honey. Oh my God. See, people? God wants to bless you over it. Woo, come on. Oh my God. There's so many people in here that God wants to bless and you're holding back the hand of God. Why? Because you're still walking in your rebellious ways. You're still walking around with all this stupid pride. Let it go, people. I'm being honest here this morning. Sometimes I get so tired with Christians, Cristianos sufriendo. Christians suffering? That's not the promise that God gave us. God told us that He was going to take us into a, into a land with milk and honey. Amen? How many people like honey? I love honey. How many people drink milk? I drink lactose milk because the other bit makes me. I ain't going there. Amen? But it just doesn't agree with me. 
Amen. But seriously, people, God wants to take you to a place. Oh, my God, people. You know what? There's people in here right now that shouldn't be living in the level that you're at. Mm -hmm. You should be living in another level, a higher level. Don't you want to be elevated with the favor of God to the next level? See, the thing is that you don't know what God has in store for you. But I tell you what, I can tell you this much. He's got something in store for you. But you just don't know what it is. But I tell you what, if you get in line with God, if you get in line with the Word of God, you're going to start seeing those things unfold quickly, people. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. He says, Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst, lest I consume you on the way, for you are a what? A stiff-necked people. Amen? And when the people heard these bad news, they did what? They mourned. And when people mourn, it's because something is dying or something has, what? Is dead, right? Have you ever cried and not go to a funeral? See, there's people that can cry like they're mourning for something because they're grieving because the hurt and the pain is so deep into their hearts and has nothing to do with a funeral, has nothing to do with death. Have you ever been in that place where you mourn, huh? And you're grieving and the sorrow is there because the hurt and the pain is so deep into your heart because somebody came and did something to you. Amen? Amen. Because I know that some of you have been there. And maybe you're there right now. Amen? And when the people heard these bad news, they mourned, and no one put what? His ornaments. For the Lord had said to Moses, Say to the children of Israel. Okay, this is what the Lord told me. Say to the children of Truth and Love Family Ministries this morning. What is He saying to us? What is He trying to tell us, people? Amen? He's trying to tell you to get away from your stubborn, ignorant, idiotic ways people there's too many stubborn people in the body of Christ too many people are too prideful too many people can't even look to the left or to the right amen because they're too stiff necked they look like they're walking around with this brace in their neck and if they have to look to the left they gotta turn their entire body this way and if they have to go to the right they go like this Be like, you're not gonna make me look that way pastor or this way Whatever you do, don't look back this way. Because you will really be in trouble. Amen? But there's too many people that are holding on to their ways. we got to let them go, you guys. We have to let go of all these ways. How do you expect to get on His way if you try to do it your way? It's not about you no more. I told you guys, this is not Burger King Ministries. You can't have it your way in here. Amen? you got to do what God says. He's talking to the believers here this morning. Amen. He's talking to God's people here. No, here. Amen. I hope you guys are getting all this. Yes. Amen. 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 Otherwise, buy the tape. That's Amen. Amen. Oh, come back next week. I'll repeat the same message again. <laughs> Amen. When is Pastor going to get out of Exodus? When the Lord tells me to? Amen. Amen. You just get in the boat and quit rocking it. <laughs> Amen. For the Lord had said to Moses, Say to the children of Israel, You are. See? God knows. See, God knows how you act. Oh, gosh. Can I get down? Yes. God already knows how you act. God knows your fleshly, worldly, earthly ways. Are, is everybody in here walking in the fruits of the Spirit? All of them? Really? So you're walking in love? You're walking in joy? You're walking in peace? Huh? Are you walking in long suffering? Are you walking in kindness? Have you humbled yourself? Huh? Oh, one more. Are you walking in self control? Are you taking control of your life when you should be? Are you? Are you taking control of your life? Or are you, is the enemy lying to you? Huh? Because if you had any kind of self-control, you will not be in sin. 
You will not be in any kind of sin. But people have no control over themselves. You know why? Because the flesh rises up. And then the flesh comes down. Then you want to start walking like you used to walk. They were up on the used to walk like this. What are they saying? What's happening? What do you mean, what's happening? What's going on? What's up, brother? Walk like a man. Huh? And then you've got all these guys walking with their pants down to their legs, behind their knees, and they're walking like this. What's up with that? Huh? Aprieta del cinto. Tighten up your belt. Pick up your buckle up, man. Amen? But too many people are too stiff-necked. Pastor, well, I'm not coming to this church no more. Man, he's always spanking us. He's always whipping us. You ain't seen nothing yet, baby. Amen. Seriously. Amen. Amen. See, Moses was too kind with his people. He was a humble man. Through all this, you know what they did? You know why? I'm going to tell you why. Oh, thank you, Father. Do you know why people took advantage of Moses and why they acted the way they did? Huh? Because he was a humble man. And they took advantage of his kindness. They took advantage because he knew they knew that he was humble. Hey, don't let nobody do that to you. Amen. Don't let nobody use you. Just because you're kind, that doesn't mean that you're weak. Right. You're just trying to love them. That's right. Amen. 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 And that's all, that's all, that's all Moses was trying to do with these people. Because every time that God would try to come against the people, who stood in the gap? Why? Because he loved the people. And he went through so much with all the people. And the people kept bagging on him and bagging on him and bagging on him. And even Aaron and his own sister came against him. Yeah. Talking about the man of God behind closed doors. And God heard it. Flesh and blood. Talking about flesh and blood. Huh? When was the last time you talked about your brother and your sister? Huh? Huh? <clears throat> Well, you guys were just praising God right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. And there you are talking about your brother and sister. Hey, didn't you guys all come out of the same womb? Can you imagine how your mother feels? Huh? When brothers and sisters can't get along anymore? What happened? And when did it happen? And why did it happen? Huh? I'll tell you why, because there's a lot of pride, there's a lot of just jealousy, and there's a lot of stiff naked people in the Amen. body of Christ still. Yes, right. Amen? Amen? People can't even come together. Pastors can't even come together. Pastors betraying pastors. Huh? Well, how many people do you have in your church, Pastor Bob? Doesn't matter. The Lord says, as long as two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there in the midst. Amen. Look, I'm not worried about empty chairs. We got all these chairs because one day they're going to get filled up. Amen. That's why the Lord told me to buy a hundred chairs. And guess what? I never bought them. You know why? Because the favor of God was on me. Amen. And these chairs were given to us. Brand new. Jesus. Brand new. We got a hundred chairs. Brand new. That's the favor of God. Amen. Amen. You guys have no clue how much favor God has poured into this church and to this ministry. Amen? Amen. Wouldn't you like when somebody would just come along and just bless you? Yes. Huh? Amen. Because you deserve it. Because God sees. Well, I think it's time for me to open up this window Amen. and just bless. Yes. Amen. You can put your name there if you want. I know that I want the blessings of God in my life. I really do. Amen. I don't want to suffer. Nobody here should be suffering. Nobody here should be walking in lack. Nobody, 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 nobody. He gave a promise to Moses and to his descendants. Are we his descendants? 
We have, we are. We, do we have any blood bought, born again Jews in here? Huh? Is there any Jews in this place? No. Puro Mexicanos. Don't tell me that you're one percent. Jew. Okay, that's not me. Are you a true Jew? Is there, is there anybody in here that's a hundred percent Jew? No. Guess what? We're Gentiles. We're the new Israel. We got grafted into the seed of Abraham. Now, if God gave Abraham the promises, how much more should we receive them? Come on, you guys. Wake up to this. Amen. Amen. Look, God chose Israel back in those days as their chosen people. And look at what these people did. They betrayed God. No, they betrayed God. And they still don't believe in Christ, that He's the Messiah. But we as Gentiles, who did Jesus Christ go to? He went to the Gentiles. Who did Paul go to? The Gentiles. Okay? Aren't you, aren't you grateful that we have been grafted yes, into the seed of Abraham? Yes. Huh? Man, we're part of this great tree, people. Yes, Amen. Amen. Has anybody ever grafted something huh? Yes. from one tree to another yes. and make one tree grow? Yes. Two trees from one tree. Yes. Huh? That's the way we are, people. We've been grafted. We've been grafted. We. Yes. Oh my God, Some, listen, oh thank you Father, something had to get cut in half in order to bring two things together as one. Amen. Jesus. For the Lord has said to Moses, say to the children of Israel, you are a stiff naked people. I could come up into your midst one moment and consume you. Now therefore take off your ornaments that I may know what to do to you. So the children of Israel stripped themselves from their ornaments by Mount Oro. And I already told you about the ornaments. But let me go a little deeper, people, okay, with this word ornaments. Remember when God told the people to go to the Egyptians and ask them for the silver and the gold and yes. the linen? Yes. Huh? And they took it. Yes. And they put it on. They were putting Egypt on. How can you stand? How can you stand before the Lord with Egypt on you? And the Lord says, remove those ornaments from you. So you can stand before the Lord with a clean mind and a clean heart and clean hands, people. Because those ornaments represented what Egypt was. Amen? Amen? This is why they were acting the way they did. Look at all of them. All the two million people. Think about all the silver and all the gold and the linen that was given to them so they could leave Egypt. They didn't leave poor. They left rich. But guess what? Along the way, they became disobedient and they lost their riches. And you know that God had commanded the people to go ask for these things because He wanted to bless them? But when they saw their disobedience, the Lord did what? He removed the blessings. Oh my God, people. And you think that God doesn't know what He's doing? You know that God never makes a mistake? Huh? Tell somebody, I am not a mistake. You're not. You are not a mistake. You are not a mistake. You were born with reason. And there's more than that. You have purpose in life now. And your purpose is to serve the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind. Amen. To serve Him with purpose. And you should have passion pushing that purpose. Amen. The passion that's in you should be pushing your purpose. Amen. Towards what? Towards your destiny. Amen. Amen. I hope somebody's taking notes. Amen. Amen. So the children of Israel stripped themselves from their ornaments by Mount Horeb. Amen. Amen. I want to I, I share this with you because, oh my God, people, if you only knew how much God has been given me to share concerning this teaching. 
Turn over, stay right there where you're at, but turn over to the book of Zechariah. Like I said, people, just when the enemy, just when the enemy has a foothold on you and he's trying to pull you back. Amen. Can I tell you something, you guys? Huh? You know that when you fall into sin, guess who's that? Guess who's pushing you to fall into sin? The enemy, the enemy right? Do you recognize it? Yes. Can you recognize when you're in sin? <laughs> Go over to the book of Zechariah. I'm going to share this with all of you because this is what this is what God can do, people. You know that God can turn the tables around in your favor when you least expect it? Is everybody paying attention to what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Just when you think, just when you think, just when you think, this is what happens. See, we think too much about it. But just when you think that it's all over, God says it's not over till it's over. Amen. This is what God is saying. Amen? It's not over till it's over. Amen? So let me just give you a little bit of introduction. Then I'm going to take you to the scripture that God gave me to show you how quickly, how quickly God can turn any and every issue that's in your life right now. Amen? How many people are dealing with an issue right now? Come on, don't be ashamed. I know that I am right now. I'm dealing with an issue right now. But I know that God's going to turn it around. Amen. No, I know that 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 I know. All I know is that I have to wait on God. I can't deal with this. I can't dwell on it. I can't. I'm not even banking on that issue because I know that God's going to bring it back. And he's going to make it right. Yeah. I get enough faith to believe Amen. that he's going to make it right. When he does it, doesn't matter to me. All I know that it's going to come back. Yeah. Amen? Amen. So let me tell you about this minor prophet here. Okay, Zechariah. Let me give you just a little bit of history and why God chose him to be who he was. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. It says, for a, it's not in there. I'm going to read this to you guys. So, what was he, where's he reading from? He said, Zechariah, page what? 831. <laughs> Amen. Just listen to what I'm saying here. Then I'm going to take you to the scripture. Then I'm going to show you how quickly God can turn things around in your life. And how God can bring God's favor and his grace in one day, in a moment of time. Amen. Amen. It says, for a dozen years or more, he says, the task of rebuilding the temple. Look, I'm not just talking about a building. I'm talking about your temple. The temple of the living God. That's you. Listen to what I'm saying. Amen. So we should not allow anything to defile this temple. Because the word tells us this. <laughs> Aren't you afraid? Don't you fear God? If you allow something that defiles your temple to come in and you've opened up the door to it and you want the blessings and the favor of God on you, this is a heavy teaching, people. Because I want you guys to be blessed. Amen? Amen. It says, for a dozen years or more, the task of rebuilding the temple has been what? Half completed. When was the last time you started something and you didn't finish it? And it's still there waiting for you to finish. You, not your husband or your wife, or you're going to hire somebody to come and finish it. Because if you can do it and you started it, then you can finish it. When was the last time you started something and you have not done nothing? Amen? Amen? Listen to me, people. Follow up with diligence. Follow it up in following through. Amen? Don't depend on nobody else to do it but you. Because nobody can do it better than you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. <laughs> For a dozen years or more, the task of rebuilding the temple has been half completed. But I love this. He says, Zechariah is commissioned by God. Uh, yeah. Has God ever called you to do something? Huh? 
Did you sit there and wait? Did you sit there and procrastinate? Especially when you knew that you know that you know that you know that it was God? Huh? When was the last time you heard from God? Can you imagine if I would have waited one more day to think about ministry? To think about moving from the why to here? Huh? Look, nobody let me hear about God. I didn't call on the church. Well, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? What do you think? Well, well, well. Can you imagine? Huh? Can you imagine if I would have listened to the people? We wouldn't be in this place right now. Right. I'm serious, people. I'm, I'm being honest with you guys. Right. And I'm being transparent. Because I had a lot of negative people telling me, don't go there. Go here. Go here, Pastor Bob. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you this. Look, I found a building one time. I walked into this building. I said, yes, Lord, right here, Lord, right here. You know what was my mistake? My mistake? I brought 15 people with me. <laughs> what a stupid idiot, huh? <laughs> I didn't even pray about bringing certain people. Thank you, Father. I'm coming down now. <laughs> I didn't pray about, listen to me, you guys. I did not pray about bringing certain people with me that would stand in the gap and follow through. Yeah. I just brought people mm -hmm. thinking, well, my God, these people are with me. <laughs> They're with us. My God. They'll be in agreement with me. Okay? We saw three buildings and one street. I'm not going to tell you where it is. Not yet. So we walk into this building. I walked in it, and it's a warehouse. All of a sudden, God began to give me a vision. We can do this, 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 this. We go up down the street, Hummerson. We go into another building. Man, and the people say, Man, Pastor Bob, I don't think we like this. Oh, Pastor Bob, I don't think we like this over here. Okay, let's go to the third building. So we go to the third building. And we're looking at the building. It's just, Oh my God, look at all the traffic that's here. All the noise, the industrial over there. And this and that. And we all went back to the first building. And we're all standing there in the parking lot. I brought the anointing oil out. Amen. And I started sprinkling the drive, the, the whole parking lot. Amen. And we all held hands and everything. And we all prayed. We're all in agreement. And all of a sudden I get two people. <laughs> Pastor Bob, uh, can we afford this? Didn't we just pray? <laughs> Pastor Bob, are you sure it's not going to put us up against the wall? This <laughs> And it never came to pass, Brother Jason. Remember the 12 spies that went out? Remember that they saw the land of milk and honey. They brought the they brought the evidence back. And yet you had ten people that came against everything that they saw. No, the giants are there. They're big and they're tough, and they got these big giant swords, they're gonna cut us to pieces. And Joshua and Caleb says, Yes, we can. Amen. And because of the people, Moses heeded to the people. Can you imagine if I would have brought somebody with me into this building? You know that I learned my lesson over there? Huh? That three years later, I came in here by myself. And God opened the doors. Amen. You know, even Moses, when, oh, thank you, Lord, even God told Moses, go and pick 70 truthful men, men that, men that are willing to stand in the gap with you all the way. And he went and picked men, not the women. Has nothing to do because you're a woman, but faithful men. 
Man, they would stand in the gap and follow through that. No matter what happens, they would stand together. Amen. You know, that's what God is looking for as a whole body of Christ now. Huh? He's looking for men and women that are willing to go all the way with God. Amen. Amen. But Zechariah is commissioned by God to encourage the people in their unfinished responsibility. Oh my God, people. Unfinished responsibility? And you started something and you have not finished it? And it's still there? Huh? Waiting for you to finish it and you have done nothing about it? And you've got the tools, you've got the resources, you've got all this stuff in your hands and you're not doing nothing. Why? Why? Nobody can answer that but you. Amen? Amen. What are you waiting for? Manna from heaven? It ain't going to come, people. The manna's not coming no more. You know what God is looking for? Can somebody tell me what God is looking for? Where's all the, where's all the Christianos in here? Huh? Truth and faithful service. Faithfulness, but more than faithfulness, He's looking for obedience. Obedient people. Amen. 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 So God encourages the people to their unfinished responsibility. He says, rather than exhorting them to action with strong words of rebuke, because he could have rebuked them. Zechariah could have rebuked every person that was there, but he didn't. He encouraged them. To get back to that place where God had called them to be. Amen? Amen? To finish the temple. No, to finish the temple. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So Zechariah seeks to encourage them to, to action by reminding them of the future. Listen to me, people. Of the future importance of the temple. Amen? How many people care about your own temple? How many people care about yourselves? Yeah. Yeah. Take care of your temple, people. Yeah. Quit abusing your temple. <coughs> Amen? Amen? Look, I know we all love to eat. Sometimes we eat more than we have to. And sometimes we eat more than we want to. But take care of your temple. Yeah. Take care of your temple, people. We only have one life on this earth. Right. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So Zechariah seeks to encourage them into action by reminding them of the future importance of rebuilding the temple. He says, the temple must be built. It must be built. It says, for one day, oh my God, people, for one day, the Messiah's glory will inhabit it. Remember on the day that you said, yes, Lord, what came into your life? Are you guys awake? Yeah. <laughs> it's Sunday morning. The sun came up. It's another day. Amen. 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 The temple must be built for one day the Messiah's glory will inhabit it. But I love this people, but future blessings. How many people are looking for future blessings? Yeah. You know what future blessings are? You want me to tell you and explain it to you? Future blessings, people, are blessings that you've been praying for. Yeah. Now you know what your future holds. What are you praying for right now? No, what are you praying for? Everybody in here is praying for something. I know what I'm praying for. Those are future blessings that I'm waiting on God. Do I want to hinder the hand of God from blessing me? No, I want the favor of God to fall on me. Amen. I want His grace to fall on me. Yes. Amen. Amen. I want those future blessings to come. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to keep on waiting and I'm going to keep doing what God has called me to do. Amen. 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 And I'm going to keep doing it His way. It's not about me no more. It's only one way. Amen. 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 It says, but future blessings is contingent upon present. <coughs> oh, here it comes, people. Present obedience. 
It's not about how you were obedient yesterday or when you came to the Lord. It's talking about daily obedience. Daily obedience. Amen? I'm speaking truth here, people. It's about daily obedience. You can't be disobedient one day and obey the Lord the next day. That's a lukewarm Christian. One foot in and one foot out. Well, Lord, I need your blessings. I need a blessing, Lord. And all of a sudden, something pulls you away. Don't you know that by the time you pray and by the time you receive it, you have to remain faithful? Amen? I hope this is doing something from the neck up. Wake up because it has nothing to do with your heart. It's all up in here. This is what controls this. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. He says, but future blessings is contingent upon present obedience. Look, the people are not merely building a building. They are building the future. What are you building for yourselves? Huh? No, what are you building for yourselves right now? What are you truly building for yourselves right now? This is, th these are heavy words that the Holy Spirit is saying here. What do you guys want in life for tomorrow? What do you guys want from God? Huh? Don't you want to live happily with one another? Husband and wives, wives and husbands, sons and daughters. Don't you want to have a happy family? Amen. Huh? Yes. Look, we can't go back to happy days. <laughs> Monday, Tuesday. We can't go back to happy days no more. No. Look, we live for today and, 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 and hope for tomorrow, people. Amen? Amen. You can't have a good life. <laughs> you can't have a happy life. You can't have a good marriage if you choose to. Everything's done by choice, people. Right. Exactly. You can love your wife, or you can love your husband. You can choose to do whatever you want with your marriage. Or your home, or your household, or your sons, or your daughters. You can do anything and everything that you want, but it's going to be done by choice. You want the blessings of God in your life? How many want the blessings of God? Come on, raise your hand if you want the blessings of God. Then do what is right in the sight of God. Yeah. Quit messing around with life, people. Yeah. Huh? Quit messing around with life. Life is too short. Mm -hmm. You want God to consume you like he said right here? Huh? Mm -hmm. I don't want God to take anything that I've been believing for. Yeah. I hope that I'm speaking truth here this morning. Oh, man. Man. Look, I've never heard messages like this from another preacher or another pastor. We've been serving the Lord for 37 years, and I have never heard teachings like this. You know why? Because they don't want to get down, nitty-gritty. They don't want to get down into their hearts and start taking all that junk out of us. Come on. It's starting to time. Tira la basura. Ya pesta. You know that stuff that you got hidden back of the refrigerator? That one of these days you're going to eat it? Huh? Open up the refrigerator. Something smells in there, huh? Guess what it is? Clean it up. Yeah. Oh, maybe. <laughs> it still smells good. <laughs> Anything smells good till you eat it. Amen? Amen. Uh, well, I'll drink to that. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Can I continue? Amen. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Father, for expand. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> this is the people are not merely building a building. They are, build <coughs> they are building the future. Amen? Amen. And with that as their motivation, with that as their motivation, how many people are motivated? How many people have motivation? How many people want to follow? <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Can somebody give me a cough drop? Oh, thank you. See, even the stupid lion there was trying to shut me up. So if I say, you don't hear me in 
be doing my sucking. <laughs> You guys are going to know what I'm saying. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Amen. But with that as their motivation, they can enter into the building project with a wholehearted zeal. Oh, my God, people. For their Messiah is coming. You know what he's trying to tell us? Get your temple ready. People. The Messiah is coming. Get your heart in order. Get your mind in order. Get your household in order. Amen. 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 Now we're going to go into the favor of God. Amen. Zechariah chapter 3. Starting in verse 1. Amen. 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 And this is Zechariah speaking. And God is showing him some things. Has God ever shown you something? Huh? How many people have seen the hand of God move in your life? Amen. Amen. What's this thing at big? You got everything over here. But God, but God. Let me put it back exactly where it was at. <laughs> She's got my number. <laughs> One, two, zero, five. <laughs> then he showed me Joshua, the high priest. He's not talking about Joshua. They led the people into the land of milk and honey. He's talking about the high priest here. Amen? So don't get confused, you guys. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan, Standing at his right hand to oppose him. Have you ever been in a place, people, huh, where the Lord has taken you? And sometimes you hear all these negative words, negative thoughts. Have you ever seen people with body language? Huh? Man, they can kill you and slap you and kick you all at one time, man, by the way they look. They will, oh man, those piercing eyes, that look that comes upon them, you can digress. <laughs> digress. Amen. And God saw the devil standing next to him. Listen to me, you guys. Listen to this. <clears throat> Listen to this. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, and he's standing before the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. So you've got Joshua right here. The angel of God is there. This is my right, your left. But this is my right. And the angel is right here. Who are you going to listen to? Huh? You're standing before the Lord and the enemy keeps doing this to you. Why are you going to go to church this morning? Huh? That's it. You don't need to go to church today, Pastor Bob. That's right. But I have to. I gotta preach. Don't worry. They already know the word. And then and you're standing before the Lord. The angel of God, he's right in front of you, and the enemy keeps doing this. Opposing you. Opposing you. Every single time that you stand before the Lord. I can guarantee you something right now. As we're worshiping and praising God, there's people up here they are thinking about where they're going to go eat. <laughs> oh, man, i got to go shopping, man. Christmas is coming. And you're not even worshiping God. And you're in the temple of God. And you're in the house of God. And you're thinking about what you're going to do after you leave the church. And you're standing before the angel of God? I just came to praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. 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 Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. 
and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you. See, there it is, people. That's all you got to do. That every time that you hear those crazy negative thoughts that race across your mind, and if it's not a God, guess who it is? It's not God. It's the father of lies that is speaking into your mind. He's trying to oppose you. He's trying to keep you from doing what God has called you to do. Amen. Amen. And this is what was happening. Listen to me, you guys. It was happening to the high priest. He's the priest that goes into the Holy of Holies. He's the one that goes into the tabernacle. Nobody else is allowed to go in there but him. And here has the devil, Mira el Diablo, picking at him. Hey, you're going to do what, Joshua? I saw you checking out the young women the other day. I saw you that you took a little bit of money from the J-Bass bucket. I saw you, I saw you, I saw you. And all this conviction comes on you and you haven't done nothing. But the devil is so sly and so wicked that he will convince you that you're in sin. So you give in to it. You give in to it. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Amen. Is this not a brand that was plucked up from the fire? <laughs> Didn't God pull you out of the fire? Yes. yes. Didn't the Lord pull you out of the fire? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I should just stand there on the whole service. Huh? <laughs> Didn't God pull you out of the fire? Yes. Huh? Yes. 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 So you wouldn't be what? Burned and consumed. Hallelujah. He pulled you out just in time, people. Right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, God allowed me to read between the lines here so I could prove something to you guys. There was a time and a place where the Lord pulled you out of that fire. So you wouldn't be consumed. So you wouldn't be destroyed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Man, I should go to another church and do this teaching because nobody's saying amen, hallelujah in here. Nobody's grateful that he pulled you out of the fire. Come on, Pastor. Thank you, Lord. We should be thanking God. Thanking God. Amen. I thank God that he pulled me out of the fire. Yes. Yes. I can only speak for myself. Thank you, Lord. And I'm glad that he did. Because yes. look at what he did. Yes. Can you imagine if I would have been disobedient to God? Huh? Oh, no, no, no. Hermanito Bob, come on. I'm pulling you out. I got something in store for you. You just don't know what I got in store for you. You think that God can't do that with all of you? You know that you're not a mistake. That's why I told you from the beginning. You're not a mistake. Right. Look, Cynthia, God pulled you out of the fire. Do what is right in the sight of God, Amen. Cynthia. And you're going to see. You're going to have a happy family. Amen. Amen. Yes, man. Woo. Do you know how many people were praying for you, Cynthia? Amen. Huh? When you were in that fire? Huh? I know. We know. We saw you in that bed. You didn't even know that we were there. We were praying for you. Oh, God. Who's feeling like that for you, Cynthia? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 This lady should be dead right now. Yeah. Don't allow the enemy to keep you in that fire, people. Because he wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to do, oh my God, people. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand that was plucked from the fire? Look at this, you guys. This is what the enemy does. Verse 4. Now Joshua was clothed 
with filthy <coughs> garments. The high priest with filthy garments <coughs> and was standing before the angel. There was so much shame and blame and <coughs> filthiness on this high priest, huh? And he was hiding all this stuff from the people. The people didn't know what Joshua was up to, but God did. <coughs> And God had to bring Joshua before the angel of God. But Satan never left his side. Just in case the angel turned around. I told you he wasn't going to be there for you, Mansell. <laughs> and you've been offering all this stuff for the people in your city. And you got a rope tied around your ankle just in case they had to pull you up. And you want to stand before the Lord? How can you stand before the Lord and you still have all this junk and trying to fool the people? Huh? Yeah. You know that your sin will find you out? Your sin will find you out. Sooner or later, it's going to surface to the top. You know, no, 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 sabe lo que va a pasar. You're gonna be walking with a lot of bedwins. Yeah. You're gonna be walking around with all this shame. Very true. Cause you allowed the enemy to blame you. It's heavy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That is heavy. Come on. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and he spoke to those who stood before him saying, it says, oh, I love this people, look at what God does. Do you see how quickly people, God can turn your life around? Huh? He says, then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity. See, God knew that the high priest was in sin. Now, if God can see what the high priest was doing, who are we? Oh, Pastor Bob, you're teaching from the Old Testament. I don't care what I'm teaching from. This is God's Word. Yes. He's trying to teach us something here, people. Yes. There's too many people that are hiding behind closed doors with their Christianity. Yes. Acting, walking, and talking like they got it all together. Yeah. Yet, they're like Aaron and, and Miriam talking about the man of God wow. behind closed doors. Right. In the tent. Wow. That tent is your house. Now, do you think about that once? Look, I want people to be set free. Quit camouflaging yourself as a Christian. Be honest and truthful with yourself. Don't you know that you can bring self-condemnation upon yourself? Huh? Do you know that? You can condemn yourself. Amen. 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 Then he answered and he spoke to those who stood before him saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, he says, I have removed your iniquity from you and I will clothe you with what? Rich robes. And I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and they put clothes on him. And the angel of the Lord stood by as they were what? Come on, you guys. They were cleaning him up. Mm -hmm. They took everything that represented sin off of him. Those filthy garments. The things that Satan was touching. Oh my God, you guys have better be God. They clothed him with clean garments. They clothed him with a clean turban. Wow. That turban represented a lot of things in those days. 
Because when the high priest put on that turban, oh my God, people. The helmet of salvation was on him. Think about this, people. Maybe Jesus. He could stand before the Lord. Now he could stand before the Lord. Why? Because the angel of God and God himself took away all his iniquity, all his sins, all his shame, all his blame. There was nobody that could stand before Joshua and blame him for anything anymore. And yet the people that knew that he was in sin could not say, Is that Joshua? Wasn't that dude drinking with us the other day? Man, I saw him roll that joint the other day. He was smoking weed with us. We got so high. No, that's the new Joshua. Amen. 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 Lord. Amen. That is the new Joshua. That's what he's looking for, people. That nobody should go around blaming you. See, because they don't know the new you in you. Or do they? Because if they do the know, yeah, if they do the know. Told us on I got this thing here. No, seriously, people. Elsa needs a cough drop too. <laughs> Seriously, people. We can't allow the enemy to keep bagging on us anymore. <clears throat> Everything, listen to me, you guys. This is why I'm saying that every time. Look at, I'm, I'm glad that my wife led us. I, I, she led us through the sinner's prayer, huh? Yeah. Yes. Guess what? Your iniquity has gone away. Amen. Yeah. 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 All those crazy thoughts, all those things that you said yesterday, even before you came into this doorway. Guess what? They're all gone. Amen. Did somebody get angry yesterday? At somebody? Huh? <laughs> Look here. Everybody's making confession. <laughs> yeah. Holy rolling Christians. Still living, walking and talking like yesterday. Listen. The Lord told the adulterous woman, go and sin no more. <coughs> Though your sins are many, do it no more. Don't go back to yesterday, people. It's not worth going back to yesterday. Yeah. Amen? No, i got to finish this. No, I'm going to finish this right here. Yeah. Oh, you guys, you have no clue what God has in store here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Father. And I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean <laughs> turban on his head, and they put clothes on him, and the angel of the Lord stood by. Then the angel of the Lord, verse 6, he says, Then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, In other words, people, he came to what? Warn him. Have you ever been warned about something before it happens? Huh? Have you ever seen those warning signs out in the streets? Huh? Warning. Do not enter. Big old sign like this. Do not enter. <laughs> and then on top of that, there's flashing lights for the blind. <laughs> Do not enter. Is that a warning? Yes. No. I'll <laughs> Lord, wake them up, Lord. <laughs> And the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Amen. Amen. If you, if you will walk in my ways, and if you will keep my command, then you shall also judge my house, and likewise have charge of my courts. Oh my God, people, well, what, what a responsibility. And God is turning this whole thing around for him. This quickly, in a moment of time, when he was walking around with all this blame and the shame, now he's lifting him up, he's elevating him back to where he was at, he took away his iniquity, now he's giving him what? A responsibility, now you're accountable. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're accountable. Amen? Amen. Yeah. that you shall judge my house and likewise have charge of my courts, Oh my God, people, and I will give you places to walk among these who stand here. Amen. In other words, people, I will give what? 
I will give you places to walk. Yeah. Joshua was not walking through the city, through the temple. And people, that's Joshua. Mm -hmm. He's got no shame. He's got no blame. He's walking with confidence. Why? Amen. Because his mind has been renewed. Amen. Everything about him that the devil was trying to take away from him, God has renewed him yeah. and God has restored him. Amen. So nobody, I don't care how many people point the finger at you. Amen. If you're walking in all his ways, no le hace lo que right. Amen. 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 Doesn't matter what people are saying and doing. Amen. It doesn't matter how many people are pointing the finger at you. Amen. As long as you know that you know that you know that you know that you're walking in his ways. Amen. 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 Because people will still come back at you and point the finger at you. Weren't you? Right. No. Weren't you? See, the word means no. Yes, maybe, whatever. You guys think about it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. And I will give you places to walk among those who stand here. Hear, O Joshua. This is personal now. The high priest. You and your companions who sit before you. For they are a wondrous sign. For behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. He's talking about Jesus, people. Amen. Amen. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon the stones are seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord of hosts. And I will, I will remove the iniquity of the land in one day. This quick, people, God can forgive you. This quick, in one day, everything that you've done, everything that we have done in the past, everything, only I say, what kind of cochinero it was, whatever it was, God will remove it in one day. Amen. He will. Amen. 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 Because I can say this for a fact, because we've all been there, right? Yeah. Right? Do we have any holy rollers in there? And I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, he says, everyone will invite his neighbor. Oh, here it comes, people, see? Everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine and under his feet. This is why I was saying earlier, why do we need an invitation to come and visit you? Why? Are we all part of the body of Christ? Amen. Amen. Huh? Hey, Mo, can I come to your house tonight? Anytime. <laughs> you got some work for you. Okay. You got some work for me? Oh, no, no, no. I want baby chili con carne. I don't want to come and pull wire and set up lights and all No, Mo, no, 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 no. Okay, I'll do it. I'm going to charge you. 65 bucks an hour. Right, Frank? <laughs> okay, now I will work for food. <laughs> Amen? But see, this is what God can do from one day to the next, people. And this is how God found favor with Joshua, the high priest. When he was willing to surrender, when he was willing to stand before the Lord, Guess what? The favor of God and His grace came upon him. Amen. And everything else is history, people. You know that people Amen. begin to respect who Joshua was as a high priest now? Huh? They respected him. Why? Because the people knew what God had done in his life. Huh? Think about that. You can think that for yourselves. See, because... There, is, there was a time, look, I can say, I'm only speaking for myself. There was a time that I had filthy rags. There was a time when the enemy was doing this to me. And not every so often, every day he would come and bug me. I didn't know the Lord. But one day I stood before the Lord and oh my God, he took away those filthy garments. Amen. He put on new clothes. <clears throat> he gave me a new turban to wear. Can I borrow your hat? Can I borrow your hat? 
Okay. No, right now. <laughs> this is my turban. Is it going to fit? No. Robert, did it change my appearance? No, this I'm trying to make a point. Did it change my appearance? Yes. Why? Because he gave me a new turban. Brother, can I borrow your hand? Let me put this turban on. How do I look? <laughs>